We are going to continue on in Unit 3 and discuss um, chemical reactions and the law of conservation of mass. So um, writing a balanced chemical reaction from the formulas of reactants and products for a reaction is an important skill that you're going to learn how to do. So here's a sentence that describes a chemical reaction. Um, sodium bicarbonate is heated, which produces sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. So the question now is how would you express that using chemistry symbols or chemical symbols? So sodium bi bicarbonate, the formula is NaHCO3, and that's because sodium ion has a charge of plus one, Bicarbonate ion is HCO3 minus, and so you need one of each in order to have a balanced charge on this ionic compound. Sodium carbonate, on the other hand, is um, sodium is plus one, carbonate is minus two, so you'll do the cross and drop, and you'll get Na2CO3. Water, that's H2O and carbon dioxide is CO2. So a chemical reaction usually always has the form reactants going to products. So um, on the product side this is what you've made, on the reactant side this is what you're using to make the product. So if you think about this in terms of cooking or baking, um, let's say you're making chocolate chip cookies so your product would be the chocolate chip cookie, and um, the reactants would be all the ingredients like flour, sugar, white sugar, brown sugar, butter, eggs, vanilla extract, chocolate chips, all of those different things are combined to make your end product of a chocolate chip cookie. Now, so we're going to write this um, reaction. Sodium bicarbonate is heated which produces, so which produces, that's the arrow, sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. So we're going to put sodium bicarbonate produces sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, plus water, plus carbon dioxide. Now, what does this mean, um, these subscripts? So, in the formula, sodium bicarbonate, you have one sodium atom, you have one hydrogen atom, one carbon atom, and three oxygen atoms. Sodium carbonate, you have two sodium atoms, one carbon, three oxygens. Water, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygens. Now, we are going to learn in this lecture about the law of conservation of mass, which I'm just going to go ahead and fill this out. It's at the bottom of page 9. Um, the law of conservation of mass says that matter is neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions. So we are carrying out chemical reactions right now. And so matter is neither created nor destroyed in these chemical reactions. So if we go back to the sodium bicarbonate reaction, um, what you want to do with this equal sign is think of, or this arrow, is to think of it like an equal sign um, in math. And so they have, what's on the left has to equal what's on the right. So if you look at sodium bicarbonate, you look at the reactant side, you have one sodium atom. And on the product side, you have two sodium atoms. You go back to the hydrogen, you have one hydrogen atom on the left, you have two hydrogen atoms on the right. One carbon atom on the left, one carbon atom on the right. Wait, two carbon atoms on the right, because carbon is both in CO2 and sodium carbonate. And then three oxygen atoms on the left, and three plus one gives you four, four plus two, six oxygen atoms on the right. So the way this reaction is written 
although it's correct in terms of how we have it set up, reactants going to products, it does not adhere to the law of conservation of mass. And so the way we can address that is by adding coefficients. And the coefficients effectively multiply anything that they're in front of. So we have twice as many atoms on the right side as we do on the left side. So in order to fix this problem, you put a 2 right here. And this is, we're going to go over this a lot more. So if it doesn't make sense how I got this, don't sweat it. We'll get to it. Okay, so you have two sodium atoms, two hydrogen atoms, two carbon atoms, two times three, six oxygen atoms. So now you have two sodiums, two carbons, two hydrogens, and then six oxygens. So now they're equal. Now this reaction adheres to the law of conservation of mass, which is great. We don't want to break, break in any chemistry laws, right? Um, <clears throat> another thing about these reactions that I just thought of while I was explaining this is that a lot of students get tripped up um, on the product side. They see this sentence describing the chemical reaction, sodium bicarbonate is heated, which produces sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide, and they think it has to always be written in this order. It's, that is not the case. You could have carbon dioxide written first, you could have sodium carbonate next, and then water. It doesn't matter what order you have these products in. What The biggest thing that matters is that you have these chemicals on the right side of the arrow. If you had these chemicals on the left side of the arrow, then it would be incorrect. Okay, so let's write some more equations for the following reactions. So plumbus sulfide plus gaseous oxygen yields solid plumbus oxide plus gaseous sulfur dioxide. Um, a lot of students at this point would throw their hands up and say, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is a completely foreign language to me, and I just want to take this to satisfy my degree requirements. I get that. We can do this. Um, my advice with these is to just start with an arrow. Start with an arrow. Okay, so plumbus sulfide is um, Pb and Pb plus 2 sulfides minus 2 gaseous oxygen. Now, with balancing these, I would, I would give you these formulas so it wouldn't be as difficult. Plumbus oxide Pb plus 2 O minus 2, and gaseous sulfur dioxide like that. Okay, so plumbus sulfide plus gaseous oxygen yields solid plumbus oxide plus gaseous sulfur dioxide. Yields. That's your arrow. Okay, so we have PBS plus oxygen yields PBO plus SO2. Um... Now, we're pretty close to being balanced with this reaction. And you might think, okay, at this point, I'm just trying to write the reaction. Um, our oxygens are off. So we have an even number of oxygens on the left and an odd number. We have two on the left, three on the right. So um, what I need to do is make this odd number on the right into an even number. And if I put a two in front of this SO2, I'm still going to have an odd number. But what I need to do is put an a 2 in front of the odd number, so 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Okay, so now I have changed the number of leads, so I'm going to put a 2 here. And then you go to the sulfurs, I've changed that, so I'm going to put a 2 here. And it seems like we're just doing the same thing, but actually we have 2 plus 4, we have 6 oxygen, we can balance it this way. So it's 2, 3, 2, 2. And again, the balancing I'm going to go over and the reactions will be given with the formulas, but I'm just trying to get you um, accustomed to the idea of how reactions are written. Reactants are on the left side, products are on the right side. Okay, 
Um, the next one, lead to nitrate plus potassium iodide yields lead to iodide plus potassium nitrate. Okay, so lead to nitrate, that's Pb plus 2, NO3 minus potassium iodide, K plus, I minus, yields Pb plus 2, I minus, and then K plus, NO3 minus. Okay, so you get Pb, NO3, 2, plus potassium iodide, yields Pb, I2 plus KNO3. Now, um, is this balanced? 1, 1. Uh, okay, so our nitrates are off. And when you have polyatomic ions in your reactions, if they stay together, which in this case it does, um, balance them as a whole. Just look at NO3, NO3. So I have two NO3s on this side. I only have one NO3 on this side, so I'm going to put a 2 in front of it. Okay, that, that changes the potassiums. Now I'm going to put a 2 in front of that. So I have two potassiums, but I also have two iodines. That's okay, because I have two iodines here. So um, now this reaction is balanced, and it adheres to the law of conservation of mass. Now we're going to learn how to balance these equations. Um, so I have a question at the top of page 10. Are the questions on page 9 correct? Yes. <laughs> because we balanced them. Uh, sorry, we balanced them. Okay, sorry. Um, so I have written this sodium bicarbonate reaction out with a little bit of space and kind of a tally sheet. Um, balancing equations by changing the coefficients is can be, in the beginning, very difficult. You don't understand what's going on. You keep trying, but it does get easier. The main thing is you balance equations by changing coefficients in front of the compounds, not by changing the chemical formulas. So sometimes I have students who just want to change, um, like they're just going to balance this by putting a 2 here. And you don't do that. You have to balance the coefficients. Okay, so the way I have my students do this I um, break this up to the, the reactants and the products, and I tally up each atom. So I just go through, and I put a, a mark on each side. Okay, so on the left side I have one, on the right side I have two sodiums. On the left side I have one hydrogen, on the right side I have two hydrogens. On the left side, I have one carbon. On the right side, I have two carbons. On the left side, I have three oxygens. And on the right side, I have three plus four plus two. So that gives me six. Now, um, you have to be careful. Or we have to watch me because sometimes when I do my tally marks, I will put five lines and then do a diagonal line. So it's just, watch me. Okay, so, but based on this, you can see that there is an imbalance. And the nice thing about this is you can see one to two, one to two, one to two, three to six. That just means I need to put a two in front of it. So when I put a coefficient of 2 in front of sodium bicarbonate, that is effectively multiplying every one of these atoms so that now they are equal and this is balanced. That's great. Now I get a lot of students who ask, what do I put in these spaces here? They don't require, subs or they don't require coefficients. You can leave them blank or if you're you know, new to this and you want to make sure that you've balanced every equation, then you can go ahead and put a 1. That's great. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to put a 0 because if you put a 0, that implies that 
um, you have zero compounds. Okay, so we're going to go through a few of these together, and then I'm going to have you work some on your own and um, get those done. Okay, so let's look at this first one. H2SO4 plus sodium hydroxide yields sodium sulfide and water. So let's just tally. So two hydrogens, and I'm going to change this. I always do this on this equation. I forget to change it. Okay, so um, we have OH, H, and OH. So I have uh, two hydrogens on the left, one hydrogen on the right. Um, then I have one sulfate on the right, or left, one sulfate on the right, one hydroxide on the left, one hydroxide on the right, um, one sodium on the left, two sodiums on the right. So it's a little off. It's not a big big off. Um, our sodiums are off, so what we could do is put a two in front of this sodium hydroxide. Be aware that when you put a two in front of this sodium hydroxide, it multiplies this one, so now that is equal, but it also multiplies the OH, so now I have two. Okay, so now I need to balance on the right side. So it's kind of like you go back and forth, back and forth. So you get, you put a two over there. Now that's equal. Um, and now I've changed my hydrogens to two. And that's equal. So everything is equal here. And I can put my coefficients of one there. All right, so the next one. We have magnesium oxide, iron, going to iron three oxide and magnesium. So we have one magnesium, one magnesium, one oxygen, three oxygens, one iron, um, two irons. Okay, so this is not balanced we have oxygens that are off and we have irons that are off. So let's change the oxygens to three. Um, so multiply that by three. That's good. Now I'm going to put a three in front of the magnesium because I've changed the three there. So now I need to put a three there. And then I get One iron, two iron. So I need to put a two in front of this, and we're good. Okay, so three, two, one, three. Now here's another thing with balancing reactions. If I had coefficients of, say, six, four, two, six, you see how they could be simplified? So they could be simplified to six, to three, two, one, and three. If you ever come up with larger numbers, and at the end you should just figure out if you can divide any of your coefficients by common denominator. Okay, in this bottom one, all right, two golds, one gold, three sulfurs, one sulfur, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. All right, so it looks like my golds are off and my sulfurs are off. I'm going to start with the sulfurs. So I will put a 3 in front of this one. That's good. And then um, now I have changed my hydrogens. So 2 times 3 would give you 6. So now 6 is not equal to 2, so I'm going to have to change my hydrogens over here by putting a 3. So now that's equal. The one last thing we have to do is to change the gold. So multiply this one by 2, and we're all good. Okay. So on the next page, I have some practice ones. And I want you to hit pause and work through these ones. Actually, 
let me work through this top one and then you can hit pause on the next one. Okay, so phosphorus one, one, chlorine five, watch me, <laughs> uh, one, hydrogen two, be careful, your hydrogen is here and here, so you have four. And I'm going to put three and one. So some, when you have a atom that's in both products, I like to break it up because when you multiply this one, it doesn't multiply that one necessarily. Okay, oxygen, you have um, one oxygen here and four oxygens here. Okay. Um, so our phosphorus looks good. Chlorines are off. Let's fix our chlorines by putting a 5 in front of HCl. So now that's equal. Now we've put a 5 in front of this. So we have 3 plus 5 gives you 8. Okay, over here we just have 2. How are we going to make 2 equal to 8? Well, I'm going to put a 4 in front of this. So 4 times 2 equals 8. And then um, I have changed my number of oxygens to, because I have multiplied that by 4 as well. So 4 is equal to 4, Six is, or 8 is equal to 8. 5 is equal to 5, 1 is equal to 1. We are good right there. So 1, 4, 1, 5, that can't be further simplified. You have to have whole numbers on your coefficients. You can't have numbers like 0.5. So I want you to hit pause right now and work through these bottom two. Okay, so this middle equation um, should get 2, 3, 1, 6. And this bottom one should be 2, 3, 2, 2. So look at my balancing. It's kind of hard to go from the beginning to the end, um, you know, without seeing my work in progress. But at least you know by the coefficients. And then you can um, keep track. I kind of got tripped up on this one here, uh, this last one. I forgot that oxygen is both in both my products. So just be careful. When you have oxygen, or it, a lot of times it's oxygen, but it could be any element. Um, if it's present in both products, do it separately. Tally them up separately so that you can see um, the change when you put a coefficient in one of those. Okay, on the next page, I have more practice for you. My advice always with balancing chemical equations is to practice, practice, practice. And what students usually find is in the beginning, they're clueless about it. They don't know. They feel clumsy. They just, they have no idea what they're doing. And then you get to a point after you've practiced enough that it clicks. And you, you will find that keeping tally like this, you don't necessarily need to do. It takes a little while, but you'll get there. So you're definitely going to need another sheet of paper to work through these. But please do take the time to work through these and um, practice them. Um, because this, the quicker you can balance chemical equations, the, the easier these will become and, and you won't run out of time on your exams. So go ahead and hit pause. And um, when you come back, I will have all the answers to these. Um, there are detailed explanations in the notes online on this, um, but you will get a good feel of, of what's going on with these, you know, if, if you need more practice with chemical, balancing chemical equations. But it usually takes students a little while, and then they catch on. So hit pause, work through these, and I'll come back with all those answers. Okay, so here are the completed um, chemical equations. They're balanced. Um, again, if you have questions about these, go to the detailed explanations um, in the notes. And practice, practice, practice. These will get easier with practice. So that concludes our lecture, this section of the Unit 3 lecture. Until next time, keep up the good work.